We're about to shoot the Lester Mark I up into the atmosphere of 40,000 feet. Uh, we have a battery and 3,000 rockets attached to Lester Mark I. Three, two, one. What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Together Apart, our attempt to be together from at least six feet apart during these times of quarantine. And I am so excited because we have an action-packed show prepared for you today. We're going to have a conversation with Brad Good about our responsibility as Christians and how we can grow in that. We've got a cool little dance party for you and for the grand finale, you get to see mine and Jacob Eubanks' attempt at building a rocket. You really want to stay tuned for that one because there may be some fails in that. Or maybe we triumph in the end. Who knows? You'll have to watch till the end to see. But I'm excited to bring this episode to you. So let's kick it off. Let's see what the Lambert family is doing right now because they uh, are tired of this quarantine. They're tired of being cooped up. So they had a little dance party. So let's drop in and see what those guys are doing over there. I am not much of a dancer, but I love their enthusiasm. I love have them being creative and sharing with us of how they as a family are kind of keeping things light, keeping things positive in these times because that's so important right now. So let's jump into the next segment, which is a really refreshing conversation that I got to have with a former pastor here, Brad Good, who serves down uh, in Florida now, and he's just an amazing voice of wisdom. So let's take a listen in and see what we can learn from somebody else, somebody's voice outside the church about how we can be Christ in the world today. Hey guys, welcome back to another conversation that we get to have with uh, an authoritative voice on uh, what it's like <laughs> to grow spiritually in this time. And I am so honored to be joined by Brad Good this morning. Brad, thanks so much for being on and thank you uh, for all that you mean to our church and all that you've meant in the past and continue to mean to all the people in our church. I'm excited to have this conversation with you this morning. Well, thanks, man. St. James is like home to us. We love it there so much and miss so many of y'all and I'm um, just honored to be here. Well, cool. So those of you who don't know, Brad serves Good News United Methodist Church down in Florida, and um, we're going to jump right in, Brad. And I'm just going to ask you, man, like, what are you experiencing in this time and serving in ministry and personally in the middle of COVID-19? Yeah, you know, it's a little cliche, but the phrase that um, I've had running through my head this whole time is this notion of like, we're all in the same storm, but a lot of us have different boats. And I mean, you know, some of us are on like life rafts and some of us are on like those little noodles and just hanging on. And, and it's different for everybody. And some people are sitting in big fancy yachts. And I think that puts us all in just different perspectives in this. And so for us and my family, um, our kids are in great places. Everybody's at fun quarantine ages. Um, work has kept moving. So there's been a lot of blessings and a lot of good things in this for us. And so as we went through that at first, it was kind of fun. And then I started to feel a lot of guilt. I mean, that's what I've, I've felt a lot at the start of this was that 
everything was good. Everything felt great. We were growing, we were learning, we were spending so much time together or, you know, all those good things. But then I also get the reality that that is not everybody's story. And so starting to feel that one of the things I learned a long time ago about abundance of any kind, it isn't something that we should necessarily feel guilty about as much as it is something we should be feel responsible for. And so I've had to really shift my mentality around that and say, okay, we've been given this gift. We've been given this opportunity. Here we are. And so I'm not going to feel guilty about that, but how do we leverage that for the kingdom of God? How do we leverage that to grow personally? How do we leverage that to grow as a family and take advantage of this so that we can, you know, be difference makers wherever we are? Man, that's awesome. I love how you frame that because, you know, in every situation, there are always opportunities from God. So what does that responsibility look like for us as Christians? How can we live into that and honor that responsibility that God has given us the chance um, to participate in? Yeah, I think so often we talk about playing from our strengths and spiritual gifts tests and, you know, things like that, which are good. And there's such a place for those. But I think in a time like this, like no one's spiritual gift test is like, you're a pandemic expert, right? Like nobody gets that. And so we're in kind of this uncharted territory. But I think one of the things that has been really revealing to me is that it isn't that we've lost control in this. I think we've just lost the illusion of control, right? Like we had kind of gotten so structured and so organized that we're like, we got this. And then we realized that something so small in this tiny little virus can disrupt everything that we've built and how frail all that is. And so, yes, I think we need to, you know, leverage our strengths and those kind of things. But I think also sometimes being faithful to God's call in our life is as simple as just, you know, opening our eyes and looking at what's in front of us and tackling that and saying, okay, this is my mission field. It's my house. It's my neighborhood. It's my, you know, the people that I got on my phone. That's, this is where it is. And so often I think we come from a perspective of saying things like, you know, what do I want to do? What have I been gifted to do? But I think in this season, it's really forced us to say, okay, what's the problem and how can I fix it? How can I be a part of the solution in that? And where is God leading me in this? And we're probably going to be called to do things that are uncomfortable, things we haven't done before, things that we don't fully understand the outcome of it. But that's, um, that's where we're at. And, and that's a little uncomfortable, but I think that's, that's a good place to be. Man, I love that because it is so it is so easy for us to be so thrown off and to focus in on on the negative that's going around because it is everywhere it really mm -hmm. is everywhere and you know it it really is up for us to to have faith in the lord to give us the eyes to see those those opportunities so thank you so much for sharing man i'm just i'm encouraged and i'm inspired to listen to you talk about this and how we can really live into this idea of taking responsibility and, and making a difference in this time, even if it's doing something different than we've always done. So thanks, man, for being on. I really appreciate you sharing with us this morning. Yeah, yeah man, appreciate it. We're preaching this Sunday on encouragement. And I think that's one thing that everybody can do in this time. I mean, mm -hmm. just sending text, you know, encouraging people, just y'all busting it to make this show happen and put that out for people. Like, that's awesome. That's huge. And to be able to do that, and we can all do our stuff and, and just, um, you know, Galatians 6, 9, it says, let us not grow weary in doing good for at the proper time. We'll reap a harvest if we don't get up and don't give up. And so we just got to keep doing that. Keep doing good and living well and um, pursuing God in all we do. Absolutely. Well, St. James, you guys heard this. You heard it. Let's not give up. Let's be encouraged by the words that we're hearing and by the people that are around us and by what God is doing in and through his church. So we're going to send it back to the show again, Brad. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for being with us this morning. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I don't know about you, but conversations like that really energize me. And I was so encouraged to just hear those words of wisdom from Brad and to get a chance to spend some time with him and, and glean from his wisdom because it's so important that we maintain those connections as we keep saying over and over. Maintaining those relationships are hyper important in these times. All right, now we're down to the finale, the grand finale of today. And I'm so pumped about this. This has been hours in the making, painstaking hour after painstaking hour of building and anticipation and failure and overcoming failure and failure again. But just take a look at this, guys, because we decided to do something fun. We said we're going to make a homemade rocket and we're going to see what happens. We're going to see if we can get it off the ground. So take a look here, see how well we did and see if you can improve on it. 
as you, uh, you take on your own fun challenges around the house. What's up guys, Ross here with another fun thing for you guys to try out. This one's a little bit more radical than what we've been going through, uh, but we're deciding to try to build a homemade rocket. Yeah, that's right. We uh, bought a couple of things at the hardware store, got some paint, uh, got some rocket engines, and we're gonna see what happens with this. <laughs> this just beneath where the ball is and the charge is going to hopefully shoot the ball off and the streamer out the side if that doesn't happen we're done hard hard <laughs> okay whatever is in the way we just attacked with a ballistic missile exactly okay so <laughs> the Lester is going to space. We're about to shoot the Lester Mark 1 up into the atmosphere of 40,000 feet. Uh, we have a battery and 3,000 rockets attached to Lester Mark 1. Three, two, one. Too much friction. Dang it. I told you go without the pole. Oh, dang it. We have failed, but that's attempt number one. <laughs> well, the first you don't succeed, try again with a bigger engine. Oh, the whole thing's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it in the pot. <laughs> Well, it didn't get off the ground and the rocket caught on fire. Oh, no. So you can't use nothing now. No, we can't. We can still use the tube and the parachute, which was the we longest use, part to build. We can use everything except the, what was in the middle, what was in the inside. <laughs> Here we have the Lester Mark II. <laughs> what happened last week, Henry? Uh, Lester Mark II has some glue on us. Yeah. Please. So this one looks a little more home built than last week, but it's okay. All we care about this week is functionality. As the GoPro goes on. Oh, come on, fit. Yes. <laughs> So we went a little bigger with Lester Mark III. We decided to put six engines in instead <laughs> of three, three. Um, which gave us a pretty complex ignition system. We will see if we can actually make all six engines fire. Not super hopeful, but hey, you only live once. YOLO, yeet! Or if you're the Lester Mark III, you live three times before you finally launch. And we haven't even launched it the third time yet. Uh, what happened, Ross? I don't know. I couldn't see that. I wasn't expecting it to launch. Oh, yeah. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out so it doesn't burn. 
fire. We only got three, two engines. Only two engines went off. All right, so we have obviously failed miserably three times. So we're gonna redeem ourselves with a little five minute build. So we're gonna be launching Pringles cans from the, uh, the kit rocket launching pad with the four engines or two of the four engines that did not ignite earlier today. So five minutes, let's see what we can come up with. Three, two, one. Five. Oh. Two, one. It's fine. Catch it, catch it. The five minute build, literally one, two, three, four, five pieces, and it worked. And we caught it. So let's try five minute build number two. Two, one. All right, Jacob, what were the results of your five minute build? <laughs> Slightly less impressive. We had a rocket that literally chased me down. Here's where I launched from. Here's where it landed in the end and it shot off head high. <laughs> Just hot. Shooting full speed at me, trying to burn me. I may have said words not meant for church. <laughs> Whew, dodged a bullet there, literally. And a fail. Oh well, fail is par for the course at this rate. So obviously maybe we should have started small as opposed to starting big, but who knows, you know, why, why not? Go big or go home, and that's what we tried. And it didn't quite work out. So if you think you can make a rocket fly with things that are laying around your house or homemade things that you just see laying around that you just want to see fly, go get some engines, attach it to them, and film yourself doing it. We want to see if you can best us because this was a lot harder than we thought. But we had a blast doing it. We had a blast staying creative and staying active and staying outside and doing this because it's a lot of fun to do that. Well, guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. We hope that you found some encouragement. We hope that you found some inspiration. And we hope that you're staying active and staying engaged in these times. And as always, keep those hands clean.